I want to talk a little bit about some of the work of uh, Larry Brentro and his colleagues. They wrote a book called Reclaiming Youth at Risk, Our Hope for the Future. And I love this concept. And the concept was that they, t they, they took Native American child rearing practices, which in Native American culture, raising children, they honor children. And the worst thing in the world is to be abusive or neglectful to a child because they want every child to be raised to become a healthy member of their community. Unlike our culture with, by the way, when you say to an adult you're acting like a child, is that an insult or a compliment? Insult. That tells you something about what we think about the period of growing up. We want you to hurry up and grow up. We want you to suffer the death penalty if you're a child and you commit a crime and kill somebody because we want to treat you like an adult real quick. We have no tolerance for children. They, we want them to behave and stop acting out and we don't want to look at their histories. Well, Larry Brentro looked at these four needs and he came up with this concept that we need to create environments for young people where their needs for belonging, feeling connected, feeling loved and cared about, mastery, that they have skills and abilities that need to be honored, independence, they can't be controlled all the time. They need some autonomy and decision making and generosity. They need to not see be seen only as takers of services, but they have things to give and offer. So I decided when I was working at a residential facility that I was going to use this philosophy. And what we did was every child that came into the program, we developed welcoming rituals. We developed uh, welcome packets. We gave them gifts. We helped them buddy up with a kid so that they felt a sense of belonging and connectedness. And it really began to make a difference until Joanne came. Joanne came into our program, and she was a 16-year-old girl with a suitcase. Back then, they didn't have those rolling suitcases. It was a regular suitcase. And she came into our program, and she had run away nine times from seven different facilities. And she came into our facility, and I said, well, we use the circle of courage, which is what Larry Brentro's concept, belonging, mastery, independence, and generosity was. And we're going to help you. We know you're running away because you don't feel a sense of belonging. So we're going to create a sense of belonging. And we welcomed her, and we told her she was important, and we buddied her up, and we did all our techniques. And within three days, she ran. The police brought her back a day later, and she came in. And I decided that I was going to get all my girls on the unit to have a big meeting, and they were all going to say to her, hey, Joanne. And they did great. I wish I would have filmed it. It was beautiful. Joanne, you're part of this group. Don't run from us. You belong here. We care about you. It was so heartfelt. And after they had done 20 minutes of all of this with her, she looked at them all and she said, you can all F yourselves. And at that point, they all said, well, F you. And it got crazy. It almost got into a restraint. So my whole belonging, master, independence, and generosity thing was falling apart at this point. So I'm thinking, what can we do? What can we do? And I noticed that her suitcase... Was, had beautiful drawings on it. And I went up to Joanne one day and I said to her, did you do all those drawings? And she said, yeah. And I, I said, can you show me some of your other artwork? And she did. And I said to her, listen, would you be willing to do a mural on our wall with, with your artwork, like a beautiful scene? And she said, listen, I'd do it, but I'm not planning on being here a whole bunch longer. I'm going to run. And I said, well, listen, could you at least get it started? And she said, fine. And I said to her, you can design it. So she went out and she designed it. She brought back the drawings. I liked it. She started doing it. Some of the other girls expressed interest and said, can we help you, Joanne? And she said, OK, I'll let you do this and I'll let you do that. She worked on the mural for three months. And we had a big unveiling and we showed the mural. She stayed with us for 14 months and discharged positively and never ran away again. And I, and I want to ask you all. What needs did we meet from the circle of courage in her? Can anybody think about what I did and what we did with her and what, which of these needs we met? Yeah. You gave her independence to complete the project herself? Yeah, I told her she could design it and she could complete it. She could order the supplies. She could delegate responsibility to the other kids so she had independence. What else? I would say mastery because she had a mastery of uh, art and painting. I gave her an opportunity to experience, to show her mastery, what she does well. Any other ones? Yep. Generosity, uh, she was able to give something back. And 
She left a beautiful, a beautiful representation of her talent and her ability. What a gift for all to view after that. She gave of herself. And she gave mentoring and help to the other girls about artistic ability. So, and what about belonging? Is, is that in there somewhere? What? <clears throat> she was finally able to connect or belong to her peer group or right. maybe even the facility. Right. She began to, by working with the kids, by painting something on the wall, she developed a sense that I belong here, and she did very well. And my point is, we need to develop in our programs, we need to look at the behaviors the kids are displaying and recognize they're trying to meet needs. If we could just figure out what needs they're trying to meet and then develop more healthier ways to meet those needs, they're not committed to the negative behaviors, just like gang members. Why are gangs so attractive? Gangs are so attractive because they do a better job of meeting these needs than society does.